vast space extending infinitely in all directions. Minds strain and stretch to unlock its mysteries. We've only begun to probe, yet in that short span of time, space has taught us much. The more we learn about galaxies, stars, and planets, the more enlightened our own world becomes. With the advent of the space age, we have for the first time seen our tiny world suspended in the dark void, showing none of the artificial boundaries that divide humankind. This fragile planet is at our mercy, and we must all strive to protect it for ourselves and generations to come. We've learned that the Earth is a perfect, living, breathing sphere. Once considered unlimited, now we know better. Population continues to explode, making resources, food supplies, and the land itself more precious. Social problems such as crime, debt, poverty, disease, and incompetent governments compound the problems. Problems that aren't solved by politics or by leadership that doesn't lead. We are losing faith and growing impatient as we watch these conditions spread, and rightly so, since practical solutions are within reach. We are approaching a time when we must decide upon a new direction before the choices are made for us. The answers of yesterday are no longer relevant. We can now act decisively with a new direction designed to further our social evolution and boldly enter the 21st century. In the next few minutes, you will see a vision of the future with a fresh approach. A vision with human and environmental concern. A vision called the Venus Project. The Venus Project presents an alternative design for our culture. It provides an attainable direction for a bright and better future by applying the latest technologies directly to our social system to benefit the lives of everyone. Through education and the intelligent application of what we already know, we can eventually eliminate war, poverty, hunger, debt, crime, and taxes. There's no place to hide today. You cannot escape from human stupidity. War, weapons, corruption seems to be prevalent all over the world. Merely talking about idealism and not designing an approach does not alleviate the problem. Our main aim and our main reason for funding is to make these things a reality. The aims of the Venus Project are to ensure social and economic stability, quality medical care and education, a clean environment, plentiful housing, goods and services, recreation, and access to all the amenities that a prosperous, innovative society can provide. These goals are not merely a paper proclamation. They can be translated into a physical reality if, as a society, we choose to do so. A democracy that does not ensure the necessities of life is meaningless. So I would say the more we invest in human beings, in warmth, love, education, good fellowship, the more secure all our futures. We are tied in with nature and all of the environment surrounding us. To negate or neglect any part of that would be damaging to ourselves and our own aim. We do it because it's the decent and constructive thing to do. The American free enterprise system does generate incentive. However, it also creates greed, corruption, crime, stress, and economic insecurity. The consuming pursuit of money that grips many in our society has a dehumanizing effect and has led us to our present self-centered values. What will happen if we continue to automate production and get rid of more and more people? Pretty soon, if you automate typing and you automate most human jobs, then the majority of Americans and the majority of people all over the world will not have the purchasing power to buy products. So what good is a factory is turning out automobiles if they have an automation plant and the automobile is turned out automatically? Who is going to be around to be able to buy those cars? What are they going to use for money? So what happens? Our system dies. The free enterprise system was terrific 50 years ago, maybe 30 years ago. 
but it's no longer adequate. So if an automobile factory or any other factory goes completely automatic and most people lose their jobs and they don't have the purchasing power, you tell me how the free enterprise system can function. It comes to an end. And when it comes to an end, there become gangs and riots and crime begins to rise. I'm not advocating this. I'm not for this. I'm just trying to describe what most likely will happen. And if that happens, then a military dictatorship will come in, in which people will tell you how to live and what to do. That's called a dictatorship. It comes about when you can't manage the mass majority of your people. And so that dictatorship is something I have a tremendous fear of. And we're trying to do this Venus Project to show people of a, a possible alternative to social chaos. The Venus Project proposes a resource-based economy, making the necessities of life available to everyone. The real value of any nation is its developed and potential resources and the individuals that are working towards the elimination of scarcity. This can only be accomplished through the intelligent application of science and technology. Unfortunately, today, science and technology has been diverted from achieving these ends through the deliberate withdrawal of efficiency and planned obsolescence. This is now true in every aspect of our society. When education and resources are made available, there would be no limit to the human potential. The mass success would be based on the fulfillment and the quality of one's life rather than the acquisition of wealth, property, and power. By the redesign of our culture and overcoming scarcity, most of the crimes and even the prisons of today's society could be eliminated. The Venus Project's proposed cities and industrial plants would be the birthplace for such an environment. It is far easier and less costly to build new efficient cities and industrial plants than to attempt to update and solve the problems of the old ones. They would combine the most sophisticated utilization of available resources and construction techniques. The city's circular arrangement in its geometric elegance would be surrounded by parks and lovely gardens and designed to operate with the minimum expenditure of energy to obtain the highest possible standard of living for all. The city's concentric circles each have a specific function. The agricultural belt is situated in the outermost perimeter. A waterway surrounds the agricultural belt, which produces bountiful crops, many grown in transparent enclosed buildings without the use of pesticides and dangerous chemical fertilizers. Eight areas are set aside to provide energy from the wind, sun, and other clean, renewable sources. There will be continuous research and development for new clean energy. The residential area, beautifully landscaped amid lake and winding streams, displays a wide variety of homes contoured to blend in with the environment. They are prefabricated with new materials requiring little maintenance. With this type of construction, damage from earthquakes, hurricanes, and fire would be greatly reduced. As we leave the residential district and move towards the city center, we pass additional recreational facilities and dining areas. Here, a wide selection of organically grown food would be available. Next are the apartments, planning, and design centers. As we approach the center of the city, we see a large dome surrounded by eight smaller domes. These small domes house the library, science, art, music, research, exhibition, entertainment, and conference centers, which are fully equipped and available to all. The central dome or theme center houses the cybernated system, educational facilities, shopping, communications networking, and the medical center. 